All right, so the corn's all off and we're working at getting the fodder all off now. So we took off the last uh, 70 some acres for earlage, you saw that. And so now we uh, got the fodder all chopped and we've had some excellent drying days here. And I think tomorrow we're gonna try to finish baling that fodder. We already baled the field across the road, so that's done. But um, tomorrow we'll, we'll bale this here. But in the meantime, uh, we gotta get this drill ready because it's time to get some planting done. We have our barley and our wheat um, to get planted yet. And uh, the first thing is barley. So we have the ground in the Mount Joy is all ready to go. That's ready for barley. So we're going to plant that. And then we'll plant here at home after we get the fodder off. So, but the first thing is we just got this drill out of the barn. So it's been sitting in the barn since last fall. And uh, we got some things to do to get ready. So let's see if we can get this thing fixed up. So this drill has this row of coulters here that do a little bit of pre-till before the drill comes through. And um, I was just checking some of these wheels and most of them are tight, but that's not good. Um, and there's one down here that's, that's really bad. Oh, that one's pretty bad. That one's really bad. So um, I guess the first thing to do is see if we can uh, maybe we can just tighten up the bearings. Uh, there's a nut on the end that gives some compression of the bearings. Maybe that's enough. Hopefully it is. Then we can keep going. Um, if not, maybe we need to look at getting some bearings. So let's check it out. So this nut is really loose. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe we can just tighten it up a little bit. looks like the problem is is this nut is stripped so I don't know if it's if it's the nut or if it's the shaft hopefully it's the nut not sure what would have made that strip out but well the shaft is definitely worn a little bit but I don't know if we even have any of these nuts found this nut in the shop so I'm not sure if this is any better or not. It's hard to see, but maybe this will do it. Oh yeah, it's definitely biting in there more than the other one. Hopefully it's the right threads. Oh yeah. good. I'm going to get another cotter pin and we'll put that cap back on. It's plenty long so we're going to trim it off a little bit so that these tails aren't getting caught in stuff. my homemade cap putter on her. These caps are really hard to get on if you don't have some sort of thing to pound on. So I made this thing up. Oh, that one's really bad. All right, so we pulled the next one off and looks like the same problem. It's the, I think it's a combination of the shaft and the nut that are worn, but this one, the nut is really worn and I'm not sure why the nut is wearing, but um, it just makes it loose and it can slip past the thread. So that, we found that other nut in the shop, which is awesome uh, and a surprise, but to find a second one, probably not gonna happen. So um, i trying to think about what to do here. I, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try to see if I can just 
smash this nut a little bit. I thought if I can bend it down and just pinch it tighter on the threads, maybe that'll get us going. Let's see. Seems like it's going on there tighter. Maybe that did it. Oh yeah, it's definitely tighter now. Okay, no, it's not working. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the threads are pretty worn down in there. But once it gets into a certain spot there, must be the combination of the two. It's not enough, it just, it just slips. So maybe I need to get a new nut. All right, well, I think we're gonna try to get some new nuts. Um, the nut is easily replaceable. The shaft is is a weldment, so it, we would have to cut the old shaft out and put a new one in. Um, so hopefully the new nuts will be enough to get us going, um, and then we don't have to cut things apart. But uh, we'll give it a shot, see what we can do. I gotta run and get something. You got it. All right, well, they didn't have a castle nut for us, um, the nut that you use cotter pen for, but we did have, they did have a, what they call a stover nut. It's like a lock nut that has, um, has a metal locking kind of feature on it. So um, we're gonna put those on. That'll get us going for today. And uh, I, think it'll, I think it'll do fine for today. So we'll just have to keep an eye on those ones that we didn't put the cotter pen in uh make sure they aren't backing off but um just trying to think how to remember that maybe we should put a little mark on them or something but we'll keep an eye on it we'll get some uh castle nuts coming so we can put them on later but uh that'll get us going for today because the plan is to try to get in the field today so we need to get this be careful we got some cover crop seed that's left in there from last year so we're getting that cleaned out while we're working on this stuff this is a stover nut they call it um and it's a lock nut but it doesn't have a nylon lock nut like like a nylock nut would be it's just got a deformed you can kind of see how it's deformed a little bit which actually pinches on the threads. And in our case, where our threads are a little bit worn, uh, this seems like it's gonna work out pretty good because it, it grabs on the threads a little bit tighter um, and then of course locks it on there But since we don't have our cotter pin. Um, but yeah, so anyway, we're gonna give this a shot. I did mark all these ones that have a stover nut in instead of the cotter pin. So uh, we can keep an eye on those especially to make sure they're not backing off. I think we got her all fixed up. We're ready to go. Everything's greased. Got her all cleaned out and we just seem to get it loaded up. So I'm going to load it up here at home and we'll drive in with the drill full and then dad's going to bring some more seed in later. Um, but we can get going with this load already. So let's get it filled up.
are on the drill, so um, I thought maybe I'd just try to fix that up before we head down the road. So um, we got her going now, though, and we're on our way. So we'll be there shortly. All right, Earl's gonna take my spot. So he's gonna keep running. Hopefully we can get this stuff drilled in here tonight. Um, I gotta get back to the farm, so we'll catch you there. All right, it's another beautiful fodder drying day and we're baling fodder. So dad got everything raked here at home and they're starting to move bales in already, but the baler's still going. You can see the dust cloud back there and uh, we're getting all this fodder baled up so we can get that put away and get some manure hauled. coming up there, rolling dust too. So we baled some big uh, square bales uh, yesterday, and today we're doing round bales. We kind of like using round bales. They break apart a little easier. They're a little bit easier for us to kind of move from pen to pen because they don't all fall apart in one chunk. Um, and uh, so we do a lot of round bales. Um, the bummer about round bales is stacking. So we did a bunch of square bales um, because we're gonna put them in a stack and try to store them outside because we're running out of inside storage. Um, the barn that we had rented to put bales in, they tore down. So uh, we don't have access to that anymore. So we got to figure out a spot to kind of keep these a little bit dry. So I think we're going to put them in a stack and try to tarp it. So, but for now, um, the round bales work pretty good for storing outside um, because of their shape. They shed the water pretty good. Um, and so we store a lot of round bales outside and uh, that works pretty good. Putting bales away. Well, it's dusty, isn't it? Oh my word, it's so dusty. It's like a like a cloud is just like billowing out of the baler.
We don't have our own baler, uh, so we get some guys to come in and custom bale this for us. And they got two balers running here in the field today. So they're getting this, uh, this bailed up really quickly, which is nice. And uh, means that we can work on other things while they're baling. So not only has this been a hard year for corn, uh, for the grain, but it's also been a hard year for fodder because the corn was super short this year um, because of the heat and the dryness. Um, it never really got very tall. And so that means that the whole stalks that we normally bale up for fodder, uh, there's just a lot less of it. So um, we bale this fodder to use for bedding for the rest of the year. And so all of the ground that we took off for earlage, because we left the stalks lay in the field, we'll bale up the fodder. So we've been trying to uh, look for some options for fodder too. We're gonna bale a bunch at the neighbors and try to get enough stored up here to make it through till next year. picking up bales today uh, it's the next day and they're all done round baling now and so now we just got to get all those bales out of the field I think they bailed uh, like 250 some bale yesterday both of those balers and uh, now we're just gonna get, get them cleaned up We got Jaden running the McCormick today, and my dad is running the skid loader. So we got all the bales off the field, and we got a little bit of manure hauled. We hauled some liquid hog manure uh, yesterday, and hauled a little bit of bedded pack on some stuff that we needed to hit and now we're getting ready to plant so we just started planting here at the home field and this year we're going to try something a little bit different so we're trying something new this year uh, there's been some research and some initiative pushing mixed cover crops and so we applied for a grant from nrcs to uh to do some mixed cover crops this year so this year we're not just planting barley we're planting a mix of barley and clover was the choice that we picked uh, we felt like that'll still work good for us um, for the forage because the clover will stay small but we still have the value of a mixed cover crop so we're going to try it out this year um, we have a seed box 
on the grain drill that we can put in smaller seeds. Um, if you mix the smaller seeds in with the barley, uh, it would just settle to the bottom and they'd all fall out before the barley. So we have to um, have to meter them in separately. So that's what we're doing with the two different boxes on the grain drill. We have our seed box and we have our main box. So we're putting the clover in the seed box and apparently we did not have the seed box adjusted right because um, we put on about a little more than three times as much as we should have uh, on those first couple bags. So we figured it out, we adjusted the seed box um, and we'll see if we're back on track now. But otherwise, it uh, seems like it's working pretty good. We're gonna have this mix and we'll see how that goes this year. So this drill has a seed box, this little small box, intended for grass seeds and stuff. Small stuff like this, like clover seed spilling out here, I'm not sure why. But apparently we had the rate wrong. So we're gonna see if we can adjust this guy a little bit. All right, so we got that adjusted. I think we're gonna be in better shape now. But you can see that these tubes come down and it sprinkles this grass seed in front here. You can see all the tubes hanging down. So the main hopper comes in on these tubes into the V, into the opening disc. So um, it's kind of two different systems that are working together. 